well this is the very first lesson of foundation in this video i will discuss about the very basic form of foundation that is your isolated footing and what is the function of a footing uh, how the reinforcement are drawn in the drawing and how to read them uh, in your side everything will be discussed in this video okay so stay tight and start so what is your uh, foundation for any structure say this is a structure very basic structure suppose this is your room or this is your house now uh, there are two part of the structure one is superstructure what is superstructure every component of your structure say your roof your column or the uh, beam below your roof which is not shown here everything belongs to your superstructure even your stair that is above the ground level this is your ground level okay so every structural component which is situated above your ground level that is known as superstructure clear now what about substructure whatever structural component whatever structural component, whether it is footing or something else maybe you have a, a basement here okay so whatever structural component is under the ground level or below the ground level that is known as your substructure so obviously your foundation system that is this is belongs to uh, your substructure now uh, foundation there are different type of foundation isolated footing combined footing strip footing your pile foundation there are lots of foundation so based on your load you have to decide which type of foundation need to be uh, provided in your in the bottom of your structure so in this very first video of foundation i will discuss about the isolated footing isolated footing is the very basic type and the very uh, actually what i say uh, the first type of foundation which is provided for smaller amount of load when your load coming to the foundation is load then first you have to provide the isolated footing if your isolated footing does not carry the load then you have to go for combined footing you have to go for wrapped footing if even the wrapped footing cannot wear the load in that case you have to provide the file also okay so one by one i will discuss each of everything so first the isolated footing from this picture you can see that isolated footing looks like this can you say which is the footing part you may say this t type or the inverted t is the footing which has been as shown here also this inverted t is your isolated footing no this is wrong this inverted t the stand of this inverted t is nothing but your column this column this column goes up to this point okay so obviously this stem of this system is actually your column so what does a footing do the footing takes the load from column so obviously the column has to reach up to this point clear so clearly this is the column and this part is your footing okay so if you see from the top now i am seeing actually from the front that's why i am seeing the column and the footing like this this is the elevation okay or the side view now if i see from the top what will is what i will see first i can see the column like this okay say the column is rectangular okay and this is one side of the footing and the side is here this and obviously if the footing is rectangular there should be another side this is the another side in the side view or the elevation view you have seen the thickness or uh, that means how much thick the footing is but in plan you cannot see it so in any structural drawing there must be two view one is from side or elevation view and another is from plan view if there is any of this two is missing you cannot construct your footing okay so take note the must there should be must at least two drawing yes, or two view one is elevation view and another is your plan view from plan view what you get the breadth 
and the length of the footing okay this footing what should be the breadth or width and what should be the length you get from this plan view and also the position of the column from both side in elevation you get the position of the column from one side and in plan you get from both side okay suppose your column is here so in elevation you get the same view okay because from elevation the column is in the middle of your breadth but if the plan drawing is not provided in that case you cannot get the idea whether it is in the center of this side actually it is not in the center you can see it okay clear so this is basic idea about your isolated footing and the purpose of footing what is the purpose of footing to transfer the load from column to the soil this is the soil or our mother earth okay you have to provide all load to the soil ultimately so how this load is transferred actually this load is transferred through bearing what does it mean bearing bearing means uh, you have to bear something that means you have to carry something so uh, only in that case where the load or something is carried through contact in that case this term is used bearing through bearing or through contact you have to transfer all the load from column to the subsoil and here medium is your footing clear now let's see how this load actually transferred and what is the reaction after transferring this load okay so this is your load is applied on the column and through this column your load reach to this point say uh, this is the contact area okay of the footing and now i am seeing everything in plan no i am seeing everything in elevation okay if i see it in plan in that case the column should be presented like this okay and the footing is like this it is not actually correct so don't mind so now the load has reached up to this point now what will happen it will transfer this load or disperse note down the technical term the load will be now dispersed like this follow the arrow the red arrow okay the load will be dispersed or distributed like this this is the reason that the area of footing is more than your column otherwise what will happen this will simply uh, punch within the soil say uh, this is the column and this is your soil you apply some load here what will happen this will simply will go down through the soil through the uh, for the punching effect that's why we have to reduce the punch effect, punching effect by providing large area this is the basic okay so that the load can be distributed for a larger uh, lar larger region after distribution what happened there will, will be a reaction force coming from the soil this is the reaction force or you can say this is the pressure distribution this is coming after applying this load so if i summarize the load transfer mechanism what happened first the load comes to column from beam, from your beam or slab something else after that the column bear the load up to this point then the load disperses like this uh, there are certain angle maybe 45 degree maybe 30 degree this is based on your concrete grade or the strength of your concrete if your concrete is too much strong in that case the dispersion is more stiffer that means maybe uh, this is 45 degree okay so after this distribution what happened there is a reaction from soil obviously as for newton third uh, newton's third law what happened every reaction every action has a opposite reaction so if you distribute like this obviously there will be a reaction force now what happened if this is the reaction force obviously say you have fixed it fix this point this is the fixed point by column or the by superstructure everything is on the top of this column so obviously this is fixed now this is act 
like a cantilever here is the fixed point say so this is the fixed point this is nothing but this section and it is simply this part of the footing is simply hanging like this or floating now your load is being applied like this there is no load on the top ignore the weight of the soil okay so this is the load application and what happened this is nothing but a cantilever beam and it simply bend like this okay simply bend like this as i have shown here and simply in the opposite side also this happened so what will happen if it is bent like this consider this concrete as a uh, rubber element so obviously due to tension this is the tension phase okay and this is the compression phase concrete is very good in compression i will shed uh, many time but quick in tension so what happen concrete will crack like this so to resist this crack so that this crack doesn't happen what we have to do we have to do reinforcement or the steel so where the steel should be provided in footing now it is clear to you in the bottom or more specifically where the tension come everywhere in concrete structure where there is tension we have to provide reinforcement this is the very basic uh, principle in concrete structure where there is your tension you have to provide steel and where there is compression the concrete will take care of everything because the concrete is designed for compression only in the videos of mixed design of concrete i have said many times about the grade of concrete and how the m20 or m30 everything is based on the compressive criteria only okay so we have understand the mechanism of load transfer and the effect of load transfer and now we have to see what we have to do as an engineer uh, to resist this crack what we have to provide the reinforcement so whatever reinforcement i am now going to show you as a footing reinforcement everything will be provided at the at the bottom clear okay so now let's see about the reinforcement uh, before re providing reinforcement we will uh, see another thing about isolated footing that is footing composition actually what happened this is your ground level okay now you have excavated for at least minimum 1.5 uh, meter this is the codal specification maybe based on country or based on different standard it may vary but this should be your minimum criteria you have to minimum excavated your soil up to this depth this is 1.5 meter this is okay so say your soil is not that much strong or that much steep or maybe your soil is steep but in the uh, ground what happened uh, below ground uh, there may be water water table you can encounter the presence of water table so what happened this area become muddy and you cannot work on this muddy environment so what you have to do normally in that case first you have to provide a layer of brick a single layer of brick in flat way not in actually in the videos of brick i have said about many thing this is your header and this is your stretcher side can you recall that if you have not uh, seen that video you may seen it so this is the stretcher side and this is the header side you have to lay your brick so that this stretcher is on the bed okay not the header side you have to rest the brick on the stretcher face clear so provide simply a layer of brick that's why it is known as brick flat soling so you are providing the uh, soling or the brick flat way that's why brick flat soling or bfs after providing bfs your environment is muddy free you can work on that so directly after bfs you can provide your footing or if you think that no uh, it is not possible for me to uh, work on this brick flat soling 
because you have to first uh, ready the you have to make the arrangement of this bar then you have to cast so it is uh, preferable you provide a lean concrete on that this is known as also pcc or plain cement concrete there is no reinforcement simple uh, you take a nominal mix like 1 is to 3 is to 6 okay and put it it's maybe up to uh, 3 inches or 75 mm after that you provide your footing so before footing we provide vfs pcc and then your footing you can omit uh, at least any one of these but not two at a time it is not recommended it is always recommended you provide first vfs if your soil is not muddy it is okay remove or uh, eliminate the vfs only provide pcc then your footing or rcc clear so now let's see how the reinforcement are provided so our cracking was occurred at the bottom that's why first provide the bottom reinforcement okay here the black color shows the bottom reinforcement and here in the plan also you can see these are the these are the black reinforcement this side these are the bottom reinforcement first placed along the say this is your shorter side or b and this is your longer side say l so first this is placed as per the drawing in the drawing you can see the similar type of drawing or the reinforcement detail so based on that detailing just place your bar just notice in the plan you cannot distinguish whether black is on the top or the blue is on the top so for that you have to go to the plan drawing uh, sorry elevation drawing in elevation you can see that the blue the blue reinforcement here are placed on the black so first you have to place the black like this up to this point okay then on that black you have to provide this blue like this as shown in the drawing in the drawing this spacing is mentioned at which distance you have to place the bar so based on that you have to place the bar clear so this is all about the detailing of footing reinforcement now the point is the column has to transfer the load to the footing how it will be done the column is reached up to this point so from this point to this who will carry the load how the load will be carried just by contact no not at all for that you have to bond these two member it is not possible for rcc construction you apply some glue in the intermediate surface and the bond will be created everything in rc construction or reinforcement concrete construction the bond is created by providing a reinforcement okay so how this bond is created let's see so you are clear about this pattern you are also clear about this pattern clear no you are not clear i have not seen, said yet about this hook okay i'm uh, talking a while so before that how this bond is created this is the column column has reached up to this and this is the reinforcement of column this red this is main bar and this is your stirrup in the videos of column i will talk uh, a lot about all this what is the function of stirrup what is the function of this foundational bar so for now assume this is the long bar don't stop this long bar here or this long bar here or the stirrup here you have to continue this long bar up to the top of this mesh like this not only that again you have to provide a hook at 90 degree angle similarly for all four bars minimum four bars say this is the column so obviously you will provide minimum four bar at four corner so you have to do every uh, bar you have to continue up to this point then provide a hook okay for certain length only then your bond will be created between the column and your 
14 and load will be transferred properly now the question is how much i have to provide this hook or this hook there is a guideline in indian standard also for different standard this guideline may vary but normally what's happen for each 45 degree you have to provide four times of diameter of bar suppose this is a bar and you bend it for 45 degree it should go like this but you have bend it for 45 degree then what should be the length of this simply 4 into say the diameter of this bar is 10 mm so this length should be 40 mm okay now in this case we have bend 90 degree it should go like this but we have bend it like this so 90 degree in this case also it should go like this but we have bend like this 90 degree so simple for 90 degree what should be the length this is your task <laughs> okay i am telling you for 45 degree this is 4 so for 90 degree this should be 8 times of diameter so if your bottom mesh diameter is 10 mm in that case this hook will be how much 8 into 10 or 80 mm you can round it off as 100 mm for construction purpose similarly say this is the uh, diameter of 20 mm diameter reinforcement provided in column so what should be the length of hook simply 18 to 20 160 for construction purpose you can say say 200 mm like that clear